What are these? We found these broken pieces at the bottom of our local river. But what they're for, and why they are there, it's a complete mystery. It's a history mystery. And I think we're going to get our feet wet. It's been a long, hot, dry summer and River Severn levels are at an historic low. So when our grandchildren came up for a particularly hot weekend, we decided it was safe enough to go paddling in the River Severn in Bridgenorth. Whilst we were there with our fishing nets, we noticed that there were on the riverbed some shards of pottery and we managed to fish them out. Here's a piece which is clearly uh, the bottom of a pot or uh, the lid or something. But there were some other items that we couldn't identify. We found these broken pieces of what appear to be rings, and we've got no idea what they are or why they're there. We had been paddling in this section of the river, just upstream from the bridge. I decided to go back to the same place to have a look for more examples of the rings we had found. The water level has been particularly low and you can clearly see the pieces of broken pottery on the riverbed. I bought what I had found home and gave it a good clean. So here's what I managed to find on my second visit to the River Severn. Small thick ones, slightly larger ones, larger again but thinner. This appears to be two welded together. We even have some uh, smaller and more delicate ones here. Why are there so many of these rings at the bottom of the River Severn? Why in Bridge North? How did they get there? What are they for? One of the things I'd like to know is whether I can find these in any other part of the river. So I'm going to go back for a third time and go downstream to see if they're being washed down the river by the current. This section of the river is about a quarter of a mile downstream from the Bridge North Bridge. So the bridge is about 300 metres uh, up river of me and uh, I'm still finding quite a few of the rings, this didn't take me very long. Here are all the finds from the riverbed both north and south of the town's bridge. At 220 miles the River Severn is the UK's longest river, and during the Industrial Revolution it was also one of England's busiest commercial waterways, with river barges such as these connecting Bristol with towns as far north as Shrewsbury and Welshpool. By the end of the 19th century, competition from the railways had made most of Britain's waterways obsolete. The last known commercial voyage on the Upper Severn was in 1895 by a barge known as the Harry which came down river from Coalport with a cargo of fire bricks. However, the boat is reported to have sunk after colliding with the bridge at Bridgenorth, in the very spot where we found our rings, and only 400 metres or so upstream from our second find. Could this have been the source of the debris on the riverbed? Coalport is about seven miles upstream from Bridgenorth. In its heyday, it was the location of several world-famous ceramic manufacturers, including this factory that produced fine bone china. It's now the Colport China Museum and I wondered if perhaps they could shed some light on our mysterious rings. I paid them a visit and met with their curatorial officer, Kate Cabman. 
Um, so I found these in yep. the River Severn in Bridge North, not just north of the bridge. It's an interesting place to find it because I would expect to find those here at Coalport. Uh, in fact, we do. Basically, the whole of this river bank was a, a refuse tip. Uh, anything spare from the factory was dumped out on the river bank and there's tons of this stuff. Right. So they were making bone china. Bone china has the problem that it actually tends to distort as it's fired. It warps right. quite badly. And you can see with both of those, that's got, that's got quite a little, yes, it's quite quite a little wiggle on it. Yes, yeah. it's sort of so if you want it to stay around, you've got to actually add something to it to hold it in shape as it fires. And these are what they used. And sometimes you have a double ring like that, so you've got, you know, it's actually holding it very, very tightly. That would be a coffee cup, probably. Sometimes it's more like that, and you've got that one there. And you can see what you've got is just a taper. And the idea is that bone china shrinks a lot when it's fired, it shrinks by about 70%. Oh, right. As it shrinks, this object will simply allow the piece to move away from it. Um, and modern ones are actually pre-fired. They use a, a like a silicon-based material now. That's that's amazing. It's the same thing. It's the it's same, the same thing, thing, isn't it? But whereas that was made actually from clay and shrank along with the object right. to an extent, these are pre-made and you can reuse them. And you can actually see how that curve fits the curve of that, that cup. And those would more be for the ones that have the flared rim. Right. Whereas if you've got a straight top to your cup you'd want the one that has the double rim because that so, will hold it in place so these were dumped on the riverbank yep i found some north of the bridge but i also found some south of the bridge at least 300 meters okay it's plausible isn't it that, i that think they so get washed down the i river. think so and you're suggesting that they're only used once so they've yes. made so there must be millions yes. of these so exactly right well this i mean i have got within the, the iron bridge Gold museum's collection we have got boxes and boxes and boxes of these. Oh, so how old would, would this be? Um, I would, uh, they, they were used from sort of the middle of the 19th century through until when this site closed in 1926. Um, so, you know, some of them look, the actual body looks different. Um, when, I, when I look at it, that, that looks and feels slightly different. Mm. Um, so possibly that's a slightly different age. So what's this piece then? Okay, this is part of a saga. Now, a saga is basically a box made from fire clay, which is used to protect pottery during firing. It was only needed um, when they were firing using coal fire kilns. Particularly, of course, if you're producing high quality like bone china and it's got to be white, and you're shoving it in the middle of a coal fire, it does tend to get a bit dirty. Do you yeah. find this as well? I wonder... Well, it looks like some sort of little crucible. Again, I would almost say that this is some sort of fire clay, but I think this has been fired to an incredibly high temperature because you've almost got like like a glass-like glass, yeah. um, quality. So you're talking firing this to, I don't know, 1400 degrees centigrade? Wow. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but that's a really interesting one. So we now know what our mysterious rings were for and where they came from. But some questions remain about how our rings arrived in Bridgenorth. Were they part of the cargo on the barge called the Harry, which sank just north of the bridge in 1895? Or were they simply washed seven miles downstream from where they had been unceremoniously dumped into the river next to the Coalport China factory? It seems unlikely that heavy pieces of china could be moved so far simply by the river current but maybe not when you consider that they had had over a hundred years to make the journey. The answer is, of course, still a mystery. <laughs>